Navy recruiters don't lie. I lie. I am the liar. Navy recruiters will never, ever lie. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. What's up, guys? Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to Brandon Vitter here on the JTC with the Monetization Squad Lobster channel. Hope you guys are having just a great freaking weekend, man. I've been getting a lot of comments on this Top 5 Lies Recruiters Tell video that I made a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to respond to some of these comments that I got on my Top 5 Lies, give some different opinions. This house is not a home to you. Strength Beyond left a comment and he said, I got the orders lie. I finished A school in Pensacola back in June. Finished top five of my class out of 20 and got the East Coast, West Coast, and overseas for options. I chose overseas and they sent me to Oklahoma. Oh yeah! That's what I was saying. You cannot be guaranteed where you wanna go after boot camp, after A school, after C school. A lot of times it'll come down to needs of the Navy. It doesn't matter if you finish number one in your class or if you finish top five. That was the point I was trying to make that, you know, this comment nailed home is that if the Navy needs you somewhere, they're gonna put you there regardless of what they promised you. They can pull your orders just as quick as they gave them to you. We got another comment from Nick Ford 55 He left a couple comments. Apparently he is a recruiter or he was a recruiter and he's saying that he changed three of his future sailors rates prior to boot camp. So yes, it is possible. So if there's a rate that you really, really want and it's not available, the people at MAPS and your recruiter might tell you, dude, we can change your job before you go out to boot camp. Don't worry, just get one, just secure a job. That's awesome if they do change your rate, but sometimes there are circumstances where they can't do it, where they cannot change your job and you're stuck with one that you didn't really want and you were promised that you were gonna be able to change it. When I came up for re-enlistment in the Navy, after I had been in for four years, I was gonna re-enlist and I was gonna try to change my job. I was trying to cross rate if I wanted to make it 20 or do eight years or 12 years or do more time, I wanted to do a different job. You know, I didn't really love aviation mechanic, I liked it, but it wasn't something that I really loved and wanted to do for more years. So I tried to cross rate and the only jobs that I could cross rate to were Boatman's Mate, ABH, which is Yellow Shirt, um, or I believe uh, CS. I'm not knocking on those rates. I'm not saying those are bad jobs. But if I'm going to re-enlist for four more years, that's not a job that I'm going to want to do. So at the end of the day, yes, maybe you can change your job before boot camp with the depth action request thing after you went to MEPS. It is a risk though that you have to take. Sometimes they're going to be stuck with the first job that you get. And some people say, no, dude, you don't have to wait three or four years to change your job. You can do it in two years. That is not true. Dude, let's think about it. You just went to boot camp. You just went to A school or C school. You've barely been out of all your training for a year. You've barely done anything in your rate and you're just like, hey, I want to change my job. I don't like it. Um, dude, you, you've had your rate. You've been working for six months. What do you mean you don't like your job? We're not going to go fly you across the country and train you for a whole nother rate. That's not going to happen until your re-enlistment time comes up at four years. And then there was this comment. This person was getting more information about the food money. I told you guys that if you live on base and have access to a galley and you're not married, they're going to give you money for food, like $350, and then they're going to take it right out of your paycheck. You're not going to see it because you have access to a galley that you can go to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, for, for whatever reason, if you don't have access to a galley, on, for your base. If there's no galley accessible to you, then yes, you will get BAS, basic allowance for subsistence. They will pay you money to go get groceries. Like I said, $350 a month. But for most of you guys, if you're not married, you live in the barracks and there's a galley on your base, you're not gonna see that $350. This comment was pretty funny from MaxiPad. He says, MEPS told him, go undesignated and you can leave tomorrow. And he was like, nah, I wanna be a master at arms. Oh, but you won't leave for eight months. I said, eh, so be it. I guess I'll leave in May. He brings up a great point. MEPS will pressure you. Like, hey, you want to leave for boot camp next week? In two weeks, we'll get you out of here quick. Just go undesignated. I guess the person that chooses going undesignated because they can leave in two weeks isn't the type of person that's going to think about like long-term consequences. So probably a moot point, but it is what it is. You know, you have to be patient sometimes in life. We're really young, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We barely lived life. You guys are so freaking young. You need, you can wait four or five months for that job that you really want. That's gonna make your quality of life so much better and your time in the Navy so much better. This last question from Snowcat. 
He was saying you also get BAS if you're an air crewman and you work flight schedules. So yeah, that's obvious. A lot of you guys are not going to be an air crewman, but you will have flight schedule where you'll have to fly and do your hours in the aircraft. A lot of times during, you know, lunch hours or dinner hours or in, in the morning. So you're not going to be able to go to the galley and have access to it. So they might give you BAS, they might give you money for uh, groceries. But that's only if you're an air crewman if you're flying. But all right guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, if you made it to the very end, make sure you leave a comment and leave a thumbs up because we're on the road to 75,000 pops. My Patreon in the description below if you wanna help support the channel more. I will be releasing some uh, new merchandise, some shirts soon, so I'm excited for that. Happy holidays, we're getting close to Christmas time, it's crazy, my son will be here in four weeks and so many things going on, so many things to be grateful for. I appreciate you guys, I'll see you very soon. Brand new videos every day. Go from a balcony pulling the blue lawn chairs next to the ice chest of two grams in the blood that we just blew. Now I'm getting blown by a bitch who I don't know her name. Go